take me through, I understand that your international business has surpassed uh, your business in the United States. What's worked for you? You know what works for us is just doubling down on our original mission, going back to the core values that's always attracted people to discovery and its many channels, satisfying curiosity, telling amazing stories that reveal the wonders of the world and the achievements of the human spirit. And, you know, competition is intense, but then again, competition has always been intense in our business. Um, right now, we're still the number one pay, uh, uh, pro uh, television storyteller in the world. And I think in the last six months alone, just in this region alone, in Asia Pacific, some 230 million people um, enjoyed our content. That's, an, I think, an 8 or 9% increase on last year. So, you know, we're moving forward with real confidence. When you look at audience groups at this point in time, Phil, uh, you know, take me through who you, do you consider as your audience and, you know, uh, how, would, how are things changing rapidly in understanding audience, audience and its tastes? That's a really interesting question. I think there was a, a period of a few years ago where people were pursuing quite narrow demographic bands. I think that was particularly true in, in American television. But certainly here at Discovery, we are really recommitting ourselves to being a family brand. We're very interested in co-viewing, in producing content that can be shared amongst um, families and older children, um, content that's got a real educational component that people really want to have in their lives, that they can enjoy together around the traditional TV, and increasingly they can enjoy on the move on a variety of platforms. Uh, the world is going digital, as you know, Phil. Uh, has that changed your craft of storytelling? I think the original mission to satisfy curiosity can be applied to pretty much any platform anywhere in the world. Um, currently, we're still seeing strong growth in our traditional platforms, but we're not idle, and we're certainly not resting on our laurels. We're working with um, some of the smartest digital innovators in the world. We're rolling out our new D-Play service in Europe, and that will be coming to other parts of the world, including Asia, soon. But we're also very, um, we're very committed to working with our established partners. We don't want to break, break too uh, abruptly from some of the business models that have served us well. So um, we're both simultaneously trying to produce content that will satisfy the traditional viewers whilst also looking forward to the future with real confidence and working on new digital platforms with them. Um, so who, who would you consider as competition? Would this be the Netflix of the world, online properties? Would this be traditional news or entertainment channels? Who would you consider competition and in whatever you're doing? I think anything that competes for eyeballs is competition, from a book <laughs> to a Netflix drama to a series on Nat Geo. Traditionally, our main competitors in the international space have been National Geographic and the History Channel. Um, we're considerably ahead of them at the moment, and we, we intend to remain so. Um, we look at Netflix, of course, and we look at its success. We do very different jobs, and we appeal to very different people. Um, but I'm one of those people that think that a new technology does not necessarily eradicate an old one. Um, television didn't destroy radio. Um, uh, and I don't think the availability of our great content on new platforms means people can't enjoy them on the old platforms as well. We want to do everything. We want to be a global storyteller to everybody wherever they are, and we want to meet our audiences wherever they are. That's heartening to hear for us as a television platform as well, Phil. But, you know, when you look at, uh, when you look at smaller disruptors, smaller content creators, uh, large television networks are now being threatened by small disruptors. Uh, is that a concern for you? Do you see them as a, as a threat? Well, I see terrific opportunity, actually, in <clears throat> some of the successful digital channels. I mean, for example, we're working with some of the biggest stars of YouTube at the moment to create some new science series. Um, we would, we would want to um, take on board some of the kind of particular sensibility of that uh, very lively, very youthful YouTube attitude to making content. We'd probably blend that with some of our more traditional blue chip storytelling styles to create something that would satisfy our traditional audience, but still hopefully bring a really good proportion of a new, younger millennial audience that's found these stars already on YouTube. Um, so once again, we really are trying to have the best of both worlds because we are a storyteller for the world. One final question, Phil, and this is with respect to, you know, the craft of storytelling. Uh, how has new technology changed the way you narrate your stories? Uh, and more importantly, how has mobile changed the game? Now, I talk a lot about new chip, which is my way of saying we need to reinvent the traditional genres, the sort of shows that people fell in love with when they first came to Discovery 15, 20 years ago, natural history, adventure, science, space, exploration. Um, and I think we can take advantage of so many new techniques to refresh and rejuvenate that classic content so that it can speak to a digital audience for the future, um, while still rem reminding people of the core values of this network, uh, which are, will always be at the heart of what we do.